Now, originally with this episode, I kind of wanted to talk about the possibility of rewards for uh, playing in the alpha. Some type of reward, something that kind of says, hey, I was here back then. And I was kind of exploring different ideas, right? And I was talking about skins, possibly for, you know, your ship. But as I was kind of talking about that, all of a sudden, I, I, I kind of found myself asking the question of how far ship customization should go. And should we be in uh, skins and uh, like an artist predetermined scheme of uh, ship decoration or ship kind of customization? Or should we have more of a free hand in determining what our ship looks like? beyond, you know, the obvious restrictions of, you know, whatever the, a the outward shell of the ship appears to be, should we be able to pick the colors ourselves? Or should we simply exist under a skin system? If you look at Elite Dangerous, you know, they have their own shop on, what is it, on the Frontier, whatever. They have their own shop and you can purchase skins for your ship. That's where you go to customize your ship. There's other little odds and ends that you can stick on your ship. And so any, diff any different skin that you want on your ship, any customization, you have to purchase that from their website. Right? And so obviously that's a very lucrative avenue for monetization, which is something that you can argue helps the game, helps keep the game subscriber or subscription fee free. But at the same time, I feel that it kind of limits your options. And there's something to be said for a more, giving players a much more free hand in how they can customize either their character or their starship. Now, from a corporate point of view, it's a very difficult thing to argue for player freedom over, say, an obvious avenue of monetization. It's very difficult to make that argument because you can look at certain sales of skins, of weapon skins, ship skins, different armor set appearances that sort of thing and you can look at that in certain games obviously the old republic is one example elite dangerous is another example those are very clear you know sources of revenue and it's hard to ignore that you can look at that and you can say there it is whereas allowing players the freedom to customize without additional expense or with very limited additional expense even if it's just choosing the base colors of their ship or their armor it's very hard to argue the benefit of that because it's an intangible it's not something that you can put on a spreadsheet and attach a value to it it's it's about player satisfaction it's about an enjoyable experience Now, an obvious example for that would be something like the transmog system in World of Warcraft. That was intended as a throwaway system. That was intended as just a, oh, here's a cute thing that we're going to give to players. But then it took on a life of its own and it has become a core source of gameplay. There are people who literally log on for no other reason than hunting transmog who play for hours and hours and hours just to find different armor sets and different weapon appearances for their character. They derive a lot of enjoyment out of that. And that kind of enjoyment drives players to log on, players to play, but it's not something that you can quite whittle out of everything else and say, oh, this is why this person is playing and no other reason. Though, obviously, Blizzard has seen that this has driven a lot of gameplay. It wasn't something that was obvious from the beginning. This is something that we should prioritize. So it's very hard in a Star Citizen atmosphere to sit there and say, hey, you know, I want the ability to just 
color my cutlass matte black. I just want to paint all the exterior surfaces with just a matte black paint. And there will obviously be some artists at CIG who will say, Oh, that's just terrible. You gotta have a certain contrast of elements and different material looks and appearances and all this stuff like that. Whereas players are like, no, I, I want to express myself in this way. I want to have a very dark exterior on my ship. Like, oh, no, no. We want it to have certain color schemes. We want it to fit certain things. But they don't understand that being able to express yourself in that way drives player satisfaction. It gives players a sense of ownership over that thing that makes them kind of go, this is mine. That one over there is that person's, but this one is mine because I decided how it's going to look. And that's, you know, when you're arguing for that, over arguing for something that's like, oh, we can charge 15 bucks for this cutlass skin. We can charge 20 bucks for this cutlass skin. And it's something that we predetermined, so it's something that fits our ideal of what the cutlass should look like. You know, it's very hard to argue against that. When I look at a ship like the Reclaimer, I think, oh man, you know what I want to do? Right on the forehead of the ship, right up on the front, I kind of want to put a big skull and crossbones on there. But I don't really want that to be like a skin that you sell in the shop. I kind of want that to be, you know, something that I did. Now, maybe I have to go and buy some kind of access or permission to do that. I don't think that I should, ideally, but maybe I have to do that. And then I can come up with, you know, putting that sticker up there. And then when people see it, they go, oh, I know whose ship that is, you know, that sort of thing, that kind of free expression. And, it, and to a certain degree, when it comes down to character customization, the groundwork is already in and, you know, applause to CIG for this. The groundwork is in to allow you plenty of options. If you think about some of the new armor sets that CIG has shown us that are coming up, and some of them are really, really cool, but once again, they're all kind of tailored to a palette. You know, this set looks like this, this set looks like that. But if you'll remember, a while ago I did a video where I was you know, trying on the pirate heavy armor, and there was that stupid neck piece that came up way too high, and it was blocking the view when you were trying to look down and interact with panels. And the player said, hey, put on the marine heavy chest and you won't have that problem. It's not nearly as obstructed as it is on the pirate heavy chest. I swapped it and yeah, it fixed the problem. And that's the thing is you don't even have to look at any one of the sets of you know, physical armor that your character wears and say, oh, well, then my character will look exactly like this or my character will look exactly like that. You can go to different armor pieces and you can mix and match depending on possibly on you know you want to carry some heavier armor here but maybe some lighter armor out on the extremities or if you're just trying to put together a certain appearance for your character in game this system allows you to do that this system even within certain constraints of the armor is something that CIG has designed the pieces can be swapped around however you would like so you can create something that's totally unique And, you know, obviously props to CIG for having a system like that in game, for having the, you know, the basic idea of being able to do that in game and not just saying this is the heavy armor set and you just click and drag and it just automatically puts that heavy armor set. But that, you know, not just for gameplay reasons, but also for the appearance, you can swap around certain pieces so you can make things look the way you want and you can still say, well, I can pick off of the entire heavy armor palette to make things appear the way I want them to appear. And I hope at least for coloring and for symbols or, you know, decals, whatever, decals, sorry, on the, uh, on the side of your ship or on the front of your ship or whatnot that we're offered those same options. That we can customize our ships to a certain degree the same way. Because obviously we're trying to create a universe here that, um, that where all the ships don't look so samey, where they don't all look like, oh, well, every Reclaimer looks the same on the outside. Every, you know, 300i looks the same on the outside. You want to kind of go to a point where players have certain customization options, but I think that the Elite Dangerous system 
is far too restrictive. I, th I would argue for more customization to create more variety within the universe. I'm not opposed to monetization. I'm not, you know, sitting there saying, oh, everything should be free. And once we've paid for the game, the game should run itself and we should never pay another cent again. Obviously not a realistic vision of the future that, you know, there's going to have to be some monetization in order for a game to survive. I understand that, but I hope that there's as much freedom to customize the outward appearance of your ship as there is to swap around the pieces of armor on your character. I would like to see something like that. And obviously there's going to be some customization in terms of armor plating, possibly having different appearances on the outside of your ship. But I would like to see coloring options. And I would like to see different symbols that you can stick on the front of your ship. You know, obviously pending certain approvals. Because, <laughs> you know, there's... One or two symbols that we can't put on, uh, you know, our ships. And you know the ones. But beyond that, I would like to see players having the freedom to customize the ship to, uh, you know, to suit their own taste. Because I think it's going to give much more, uh, much more uniqueness to every ship in the universe. And it's going to make the universe feel a little bit more real and a little bit more immersive other than, oh, well, that's the store-bought skin for that ship, and that's the store-bought skin over there. If you let players kind of mess around with the palette, I think you're going to end up with a much better result. But once again, that's kind of an intangible, and it's hard to argue that against the definite of, we can sell X amount of ship skins for $20 a pop. Hopefully, they're going to go with a much more customized option. Anyways... Let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the show, and thanks for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.